welcome to Out of the 9 to 5. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Thank you for having me. Mate, it's an absolute pleasure. So you were my top three that I wanted on my on my show or my podcast as soon as I sort of had the idea of wanting a podcast to sort of speak and reach out to people. So, mate, I can't even actually tell you how excited I am to be oh, sitting with you tonight. I'm excited. It's a privilege. And Thank you for, for inviting me and, yeah. So tonight I wanted to sort of have a chat. It's just literally a chat. I don't want to hear um, too much about, I guess, why you started your business. I think we've heard that on other podcasts mm-hmm. that you've recorded before. Mm-hmm. Um, and you've also been on other social you know, media outlets like uh, YouTube channels and things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to sort of focus a bit more on on getting your idea of being self-employed, mm-hmm. why you, I guess, wanted to get into business on your own, mm-hmm. but also what you've learned. Okay. Um, okay. We've spoken many times before at the truck, mm-hmm. um, me and you, but we've never ever been on a platform where we can share what we've been talking yeah, about. You know, yeah, sometimes we can yeah. go for hours. True. Um, but this is, look, this is just uh, on another level now. Um, mm-hmm. So mate, first of all, how are you? How's things through COVID? I'm good. Um, I'm, 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 I'm good. It's been a, it's been a very funny year. Uh, we started the year with all these ideas and, and um, uh, you, as, everyone does um and then you know it just went a bit sort of upside down and um i think we've been doing well like we've just learned to adapt yeah. and um and that's all you can do in, in in a situation like this because we've never been through anything like that. the world hasn't any, been through anything like this well not in so, our lifetime no no definitely not yeah so where where were you most affected uh probably the, the the cafe that we opened so we we opened the little espresso bar so this is outside of um the burger world yep. that we're in um so we acquired this space in Asheville station uh last year and um it was the the old ticket booths so once this the opal cards and all that came along um they refurbished it and they, they uh, you had to put it in the tender and, and um, yeah, we, we, we got actual stations. So um, we decked it out, we, we fitted it out uh, for espresso bar, so it's sandwiches, just quick coffee on the go. Um, and then by the time we got everything done, we launched in February this year. And oh, then, uh, yeah, you know the rest. So it's been, it's been a bit hard. That's probably like, yeah where sort of the, the most stress is at the moment yeah. as we speak as well. Um, we've had sort of, um, we've had a rent free period. So, you know, when you obviously sign a lease, um, the landlord sort of give you that sort of time period of sort of building and um, for you just to be established, I guess, just to get, you know. Awesome. Um, so I want to take you back one step. So just yeah. for people that want to sort of go out and open up these cafes. Yeah. Or well, if I want to open up a cafe one day. Yeah. yeah. What's a tender? Okay. So ten is like you, you put in an offer, okay, and um, they look at who you are, your sort of your your background, and um, obviously with our other businesses that mm-hmm. we're involved with, and um, yeah, it's like a so you're sort of like putting a bid in, yeah, basically, pretty much, basically, right? Basically, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And then your rent free period, did you negotiate that, or did your did an agent negotiate that for you? Uh, we negotiated with the agent, so the the um, the company that. Uh, looks after all the leasing for mm. Sydney trains. Yeah, um, it's a yeah, it's a cool spot. Uh, we're very familiar. It's in Asheville. We're very familiar with the area. If COVID didn't hit, it's probably like, like how many people would it, be going through a, to be a thousands? Lot, a lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have we've got sort of figures when yeah before mm. we open, but you know we just want to create something really cool. You know we just want to we want to work with um, a really good coffee company. Mm. Want to do like really good sandwiches, um, toasties. And just, you know, just something that's on the go, which is sort of our yeah. background anyway, you know. We're, yeah. we're in sort of fast casual. Um, and, yeah, really cool branding. But, so what's um, the place called? It's called Daily Operation. The Daily Operation. Yeah, okay. the Daily Operation National Station. And, yeah, and, uh, you know, we opened in February in a couple of, first couple of weeks or month. It, it was okay. I mean, like it was a new yeah. business. Um, and then it just went, it just went downhill because obviously people aren't, people are working at home now, people aren't traveling. Um, and yeah, we've got an extension on, on the rent free and, uh, we're just trying to survive, man. You know, like we're just doing our best there. Um, it's, it's, it's fully staffed. Like there's a manager, nice. we're there, you know, um, uh, my wife's involved as well. 
Um, and yeah, we're just doing our best, man. Awesome. Yeah. And how the truck, you got one truck at the moment and you're yep. doing a pop-up in North Stratfield. Yeah, yeah. Oh, pop-up is more, it's not a pop-up anymore. Yeah, but, now you're a resident. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, the Mr. G brand, uh, yeah, the, the food truck, um, the burger truck, which is in uh, in uh, Haberfield. Mm. And um, uh, that's the sort of original location. Yeah. Um, so that's, I love how you said the brand, right? Because yep. Our last guest, mm -hmm. James Ray, yeah. so he's from the Rusty Rabbit, yeah. and he was talking. He wasn't. He was so when we were speaking. He was saying, "Well, it's not just a cafe now. Mm -hmm. This is a we're creating a brand." Mm -hmm. And you saying brand? You didn't even say truck. You said Mr. G brand. Yeah. So that what you're trying to do? You're you're trying to achieve. You're trying to achieve a brand. Well, Joseph, it's not. I, I I think it's when we first opened. It was a very. It was personal, mm. and it was it was sort of about me, but it's become bigger than me it's it's its own identity um i'm just there making the decisions and, and keeping <laughs> it going and pushing the right buttons um but yeah it's, it's it's own brand it's it's got its own story and it's got a big it's got a huge story it's been around for a while so so when you start 2014 yeah 15? like the, just the end of 2014 14 november the, or yeah. october yeah we're coming up to our sixth birthday which is wow. going to be a huge party you're well, invited. You're I invited. better be invited because yeah, yeah. I was, and I'm going to say, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. I was your only, and I, I didn't plan this obviously, so it was a surprise mm -hmm, for me, mm -hmm. but I was your only event outside of the trucks. We couldn't say no to you. Uh, we couldn't say no to you. So we, we, we were doing sort of a bit of catering. Yeah. We stopped that now um, just because, just, I don't know, we just – couldn't manage it. We, just, we yeah. just put a hold on it. We still get inquiries. Uh, we get a lot of inquiries. Um, yeah, at the time you reached out and we, yeah, we're just going to yeah. say no. It was, nah, a, it was a good, it was a amazing, good man, It was amazing. It was, it was I couldn't good believe it. Yeah. She got me a beauty too. Yeah, yeah, she got me a yeah. beauty for my thirties. That was a yeah. complete surprise. We yeah. put a, it was an unbelievable yeah. plus. Like yeah. And everyone was happy, you know, like there was, there was a lot of people. You kept everyone fed. Yeah. There was the most important thing, right? Yeah. And like yeah. we've been, we've been coming to your place I, I, since you were in Shaftesbury Road, mm -hmm. 2014, oh, yeah. 2015, and mm -hmm. I was very skeptical the first time because like, how do you eat a burger out of a truck? Like who does burgers <laughs> out of a truck, right? So it's like, so we're driving home, burger trucks there, like, all right, we'll get a late night feed. Cause you were up until midnight back then. I don't know if you remember, you were yeah, up yeah, very yeah, late. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're coming yeah. out, we'll come back from like a late night out and we, just, mm -hmm. we had a feed and I remember, it was a cheese boogie. Mm -hmm. It was, man, it's still one of the best cheeseburgers in Sydney. Definitely. But hands down, and, and uh, I'm happy to get- What's your favorite? Uh, my absolute favorite burger, and I can eat it every day without a doubt, it's Stoner's Revenge. Every day, and that's three a true times a day. That's a true connoisseur. That's my if, favorite burger. Look, if you're coming to the, if you're coming to Mr. G's, you, you definitely want to try the truffle burger that we do. Yeah. But if you're a connoisseur, like, you know, you know, it's, it's yeah. the Stoner's Revenge. So I can proudly say I've tried every single one of your burgers. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. but Stoner's Revenge, yeah. oh man. Oh, wow. if you, you listen, all my, all my listeners, all my it's listeners, magic. if you haven't tried a Stoner's Revenge from the truck or North Stratfield, you're missing out. That's it. Not, nothing else to that's say it. about that. That's, that's you're it. definitely Just missing out. That. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I like the brand thing mm -hmm. because in my line of work mm -hmm. in in finance, yeah. right? It's very hard. Well, I find I'm going to talk. I'll be specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. find it very hard to create a brand mm -hmm. without being personally attached. And you said it's bigger than you. Yeah. That's what I would want for my finance business. Mm -hmm. I would want the, the business itself to be bigger than me. That's right. But how, how, how do I even start? Like where, where am I going? Because the, the thing right now is mm -hmm. everyone knows, okay, Joe or Joe, they're dealing with Joe, dealing with Joe. Yeah. But I want them to recognize the brand, but I'm, that's what I'm finding as a, as a barrier right now, mm -hmm. like, what can I do? Like, what? I think it's just a natural progression. Um, like, and when I say that, I mean, like, it, it still is personal. Mm. I'm still, you know, running the show. Yeah. Um, we've got managers in place. We've got good staff. We've got a big team of, 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 of got for, for um, both locations. Mm. Um, when, what I mean by like, it's, it's just bigger than me now. It's, it's just its own identity, you know? And um, I think it, it, it just, just over time, it just became that. It, it just, um, I think when you start small or, or you know, the, the early years of any sort of business yeah. in any industry, I think you, ha you have to have that personal touch. 
you have to. And, and we still try to invest in ideas to like keep it personal. People know it's me, you know. Like yeah. people know that I'm I'm the guy. There's a face behind yeah. the business, so I think that's important. I don't think it's a, it's not like a yeah, it's not a negative thing. I think just to have that personal touch is always important. But it's just I don't know. It just has its own sort of identity as, mm. at the same time as well. Like I know it's a different service. Mm -hmm. It's very it's a different yeah. it's even different industry. Mm -hmm. But there's still got to be like a similar trait where it's easier to maybe follow a specific, I don't know, uh, agenda mm -hmm. of what you're trying to achieve with your customers mm -hmm. or my clients, right? Yep. So for me though, mm -hmm. it's hard to break because they only want to deal with me. Correct. Okay. They don't yeah, want yep. to sort of, there's no other person. Okay. There's no like other, there's no cashier for yeah. example. Yep, there's yep, yep, there's yep. no cook. Yep. They're just dealing with me yeah. only, right? Yeah. So I want to create a brand. I want yep. to get to the stage where there's, mm. you know, more than me or even mm. maybe a couple of different other brokers in the business. Yeah. yeah. I like, think I think the key thing is like, I mean, like you're a regular, you know, you know when you run into me there, it's it's mm. a it's a it's nice seeing me. It's yeah. nice, you know, um, and and I think that's what you're talking about. But I think it's just about just the, the culture that you create. Um if I'm not there, I want you to sort of still get the same yeah. experience and sort of, you know, like yeah, just I get you. still, yeah. Yeah, I get you. I guess like for me, I don't want to, I just don't want to pass on the buck. I don't want to pass on my client and go, hey, you, you're going to okay. deal with yeah. someone else. Because uh -huh. all of a sudden it's all, I came to deal with you mm. and now I'm dealing with someone else. Yeah. Then why am I coming to you in the first yeah, place? I think it's, again, just just creating that culture for, mm. for anyone that's employed, anyone that's on the team, for them to just really understand and just have the same sort of mind frame and, and yeah. sort of goal with, with what we want to do. And that's what we okay. do, you know, serve uh, good burgers and in a casual sort of environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one thing I've yeah, noticed as well. Is you've got – your flavors never change. Yeah, yeah. You're always getting the same burger every single time. Yeah, Nothing, yeah. Never. There's never a different yeah. sort of. It's never a different temperature. Mm. It's never a different take. You're getting the same amount of everything. Mm. Is that universal? Is that also the same at um, happy ending as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about just systems and just sort of um, again culture. You know, like mm. everyone that's employed gets it. They they know what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and they understand the responsibility that they have, and by representing the brand. Um, and sort of understanding that people are expecting this sort of thing, right? This yeah. sort of bench, like this, this, this level of sort of service. And um, so, yeah, I think it's just, it's just culture. It's just, it's just having the right systems in place. Uh, and, and just so we just keep delivering the same yeah. sort of yeah, it's just consistent, and it is like it like you you can use, you know, five years five years ago till till now you're still getting the same product. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So how how have, how has your business mm -hmm. or your brand changed since 2014 Shaftesbury Road? Yeah, to where you are today. Oh, it's changed a lot. Okay, but I've changed too. Okay, you know? great. Good. I've changed. How? I've, what, I've did, what did you change? Because I was a, I was young then, man. I was just a young kid. I, I just had this crazy idea. I, I really believed in it. Yeah. I really wanted it to happen. It was, you know, no one else saw my vision. Like that was just, it's it was something that I could see. Yeah. And that's all it was. Like, and so what I, was the kicking point? The kicking point. So what was the kicking point of you know what? I'm going to give this a go. I'm going to try, and I'm going to put everything I have into this? What made you just wake up that, that day and just, I'm doing this now? Because I just want to take control of, of, of my life, I think. You know, I want to, I've always wanted to be self-employed. Yeah. Um, uh, and, 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 you know, when it comes to food, it's a creative outlet for me. So, okay. um, yeah, man, I just wanted to, I wanted it to happen. Like, like I said, the, the ideas and, you know, uh, the, the sort of vision of, of how it's all going to come together, mm -hmm. only I could see it. So I had to make it happen. And, yeah. So I've got a very mm -hmm. similar thing, right? Mm -hmm. I have an idea in my head mm -hmm. with where I want to take my, my business in yep. terms of growing it, mm -hmm. advertising, whatever the case may yep. be. Yep. And sometimes when I tell certain people, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say everyone, mm -hmm. certain people, they're like, nah. It's too big. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I know it's too big, but yeah. it's, that's what I want to try to just achieve. Like, yeah, yeah. Were you getting in, I want to say laughed at, 
Are you sort of getting the definitely, same sort man. of kickbacks? Yeah, definitely. From family or it's friends? Just family and friends, you know. Who do you find more who do you find more uh, difficult to impress? My dad. Because he's in business himself as well. Okay. So he's um oh, I mean, look, you know, he's he's a really smart, intelligent guy. He's done very well. Um, coming from a, you know, like an eth- ethnic background and yeah. him like, you know, immigrating here and yeah, like he's, he's, um, he's done well for himself, I think, you know. Okay. Is he in food? Is he in hospitality? Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he's, he's been in different sort of industries. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, uh, he actually has a share in the cafe at the moment. So okay. we're sort of in business together again. How's that going? Oh, it's going good. It's going <laughs> good. Yeah. But he's, he's probably like my toughest critic, but at the same time, I just respect him a lot and I just... I think he's he's a just uh, just a very hardworking, very intelligent guy. Respect. But he's he's yeah definitely been like you know him or yep. um, my father-in-law, which <laughs> like uh, we had um, there was this uh, this is like about you know after maybe two years into sort of trading, uh, I remember having a conversation with him and he goes, I thought you were mad because he goes just your idea of like you know, just doing one burger out of a food truck and, and he goes, it was just, you know, there's a lot of people that just thought it was a bit yeah. crazy, you know, and yeah. I was crazy, like I was a bit sort of, you know, young and, and, and crazy at the time. And you were and, one of the first. Yeah. So not, it's not like you had other people to look up to and say, hey, look at, you know. Yeah, I just wanted to be original, man. I just wanted to think outside the box. I, yeah. wanted, I wanted this sort of concept to just be different, you know, and um, – whether it was burgers or like even just the idea of doing it in a food truck. Um, I mean, obviously like the costs involved, it, yep. it, it was, it was, it was cheaper to set up. Yep. Um, but it was just, yeah, it was just an un- unconventional way of like serving food. And I, I love that idea. And I just thought no one was really doing that. So. No, you had like your little kebab places here and yeah, there, like yeah, the yeah. one you've got at the server oh, next year. Yeah, we've, I think Sydney's but, definitely got that, that sort of cult. Yeah, 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 like that culture of that yeah. late night, like, yeah, mm. kebab, that kebab spot, you know, yeah. so. So we used to go to a place in, um, yeah. in Canterbury. It was a kebab shop on the corner of 4 and 4th Street and Canterbury Road. Not so Canterbury Kebabs. Ke- Canterbury Kebabs. Oh, Canterbury Kebabs, right. That's, that's yeah. an establishment. Definitely. So we used to have a nickname for that place. We used to call it Diesel Burgers. Because it was at a petrol station. So you used to get <laughs> Makes sense. diesel burgers, Makes right? Sense. So that, that the was chicken, the, the grilled chicken burger. The grilled burger. chicken burger. Ooh, Do you yeah. know where they've opened up now? You don't no, know? No. Very close to us. Very okay. close to us. Okay. Um, I, had a, I, I cheered on you, had a burger from there the other day. Okay. Yeah. Really? Well, I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm not even aware. Yeah. So you know the Coles servo? Coles servo. And you got the Office Works. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So I'm giving him a free plug now. Okay. Yeah. On the corner, there's like a little yeah. shop there. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I went to the other one. I'm sorry, man. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> They're good, man. That, the, the grilled yeah. chicken burger. Yeah. Like, should we go yeah. for a feed after this? Yeah, we should. Um, okay. People look at Mr. G now, the truck. Yes. I, I don't want to talk about happy ending right now. Yeah, yeah. We'll get there, but. Yep. You go to the, you go to the truck, mm-hmm. it's packed. Yeah. It's full. And people just think, man, this guy's killing it. He's cashing all the way. He's laughing to the bank. Tell us the reality. I don't want to know how much you're making. I don't mean by that reality, right? <laughs> I want to. I want. I want you to tell people that are listening that the ones that want to. Look, it's hard up work. Places. It's just hard work. Okay. It's just hard work. It's 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 sacrifice. It really is. It's a lot of like sleepless nights. You know, it's it's tough, man. It's tough. It's not as easy as it looks, and um, and sometimes we're not really that busy. You know, like we've we've had our ups and downs. Like this year's been a bit funny. Yep. Like with the whole sort of um, uh, with COVID back in like April May, um, we've had we had some quiet weeks. We've had some busy weeks, you know. Um, mm. But so like, tell, tell me, like, I want to know, like, tell me, mm-hmm. like, what what do you when you say sleepless nights, mm-hmm. it's hard. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? We're we talking about like obviously we had the incident with the mm-hmm. with the fire on mm-hmm. the truck. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. something you can't mm-hmm. really put mm-hmm, a, mm-hmm. a timing mm-hmm, issue on mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. but people want to go into business yep. they want to open up they want to start making money day one mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and i don't know if it's something that these young people just assume happens because of the way people market on social media yep. or they've never experienced actually being on their own before mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but like, give me an example i want to know a personal example what was it give me a sacrifice what was the, what was a sacrifice just um just sort of wearing like 
different hats, man. Like you got to look after social media. You got to you got to look after sort of managing staff, hiring staff. Um, uh, you know, uh, dealing with suppliers, uh, making sure that everything is just just right. You know, because every yeah. week it's it's just an, it's just a different challenge. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that does bring it brings its own like it's it's a stress it's a stressful sort of um, industry to be in. Because you open you open Thursday or well, now Thursdays. Yeah, Thursday. but originally it was Fridays, mm-hmm. Saturdays, Sundays, yep, right? Yeah, yeah. So by opening up Saturday, say Friday night, Saturday night, mm-hmm. forget going out. Yeah, you're not going to bars. No, no, you're not no. going to clubs. No, no, you're not going to friends' birthdays. No, you're not going to friends' weddings. No, and I'm a family man. And you're a family man. I'm married. But that's the, but that's the sacrifices right. you're well, making. That's that's it. Like you know my. Uh, we sort of get a Monday off yeah. at the moment and that's like sort of my Sunday. So we try to like do something with Hospital the family. Life. Yeah, yeah, you know. And, and But even Mondays, man, because like we wake up, I, I still manage all the social media. So like, you know, I've got a schedule, I, I've got a post, I've got to let people know what we're doing because um, uh, you know, social media to me is information. Yeah. Um, it, it's a way to sort of uh, communicate with, with 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 our with our customers. So that's the first thing we do. Mondays, there's like a, I call it like a yeah. time slot that we need to make a post, things like that. And Monday, it's the start of the week, but it's my day off, day sort off. of. So people are calling me, and and, and um, yeah, it's, it's not really a day off then. Not really. <laughs> so do you have do you have like a routine at the moment that you're following? Sort of. I'm trying to get more organized. I've, I'm trying to, um, because it's just my personality, man. Like I'm trying to find balance. Mm. I just sacrifice. I just, just, I just go into to the deep end. I just, yeah. I try to do so much, you know? One of and one, yeah, because my one of my weaknesses, yeah, yeah. and it's something I'm trying to work on now, because yeah. I'm, so I've used COVID as a bit of a, a time where, I've asked certain people within my life yeah. where they think, I have been going wrong over the last 10 years, 15 years, whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. right? And a lot of those people have given me the same sort of feedback. Mm-hmm. One of my biggest issues, and I now know this, mm-hmm. is I'm I'm very good with ideas, mm-hmm. but I'm very bad with execution. Okay. And I think the biggest reason for that is my mind's just always in different places and yep. in different ideas. Okay. I never really started focusing on the one thing until very, very recently. Okay. Man, the last month, yeah, I can confidently say as a person mm-hmm. that's changed me completely. Yeah, because yeah. I'm, I'm just zoning in on like one thing at a time. Yeah, yeah. But man, I, I like I want to talk about that more. So uh, it's it's this is crazy. Like the, uh, again, like massive mate, like you know, man crush. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I want to find out a little bit more about that. But I'm I've also got like more questions about me. So okay. we'll get to that too. Okay. Yeah, I think it's it's sort of um trying to tackle one thing at a time. Um I think I think that's a, it's sort of being a creative where we try to do a, a whole lot of things. But trying to put that into into business, it, it just doesn't really work like that. Yeah. So just tackling one thing at a time and, and sort of setting uh, achievable goals and, and, and well, moving that's, forward. That's what I've learned now. Like now that I got the feedback, yeah. now that I understand or understood what I was doing, yeah. now I get it. Whereas before I'm like, no, nah, I'm not doing anything wrong. But then my results were completely different. Mm-hmm. Now the last like, say I talk about the last month, once I started literally taking on that advice and going, right, I'm just doing one thing at a time, yeah. getting that right first, yeah. and then I'll move on, yeah. there's already been a change. I'm not saying it's it's perfect. There's so much more that I need to work on personally, mm-hmm. but it's just that one thing now, that one change has helped me so much. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I'm just going to like literally now try to replicate that as much as I possibly can. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I don't want to get back into the trap of, going, coming, do this, do that. I want to mm. be the best at the one thing mm. and move on. Because you don't get much done too. Nothing. Have you noticed that? Like you're, Big time. Yeah. I never did. Yeah. I'd literally jump from one thing to the other. Yeah. I'd have my finance hat on, then I'd have my property hat mm-hmm. on, then I'd come mm-hmm. back to my finance, mm-hmm. but I've missed something on the property mm-hmm. side and then all of a sudden all the, yeah. the finance leads are gone too. That's right. It's just it's just managing your time. Like I said before, it's, you know, it's um, 
we're, sometimes when we're in business, we, we, we tend to sort of get, it gets chaotic. We get chaotic. We try and do all these things, but it's, mm. it's just about managing a time and just sort of setting realistic goals, I think. And, and, you know, that's nice. Yeah. So with the creative side mm. of the burgers, mm-hmm. like you've got the Sona's Revenge, yep. the G.O.D., Cheese Boogie, mm-hmm. the OG Truffle, the G's Iced Tea. Yeah. <laughs> How did you come up with all that? Like w- w- your personality is in everything, yeah, obviously. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, and you said before it's it's a creative outlet for mm-hmm. you. How? Like mm-hmm. what, do you, what do you mean? Like what, it's, what is I, it actually doing? Yeah, I think uh, I, I realised at, at an early age that like I, I've got this sort of creativity, whether it's my appreciation for art or, you know, photography or, or, or whatever. Um, working in kitchens at, um, in, the, in the past, it's just, yeah, I just realised that it just gave me a, like a creative outlet to – to just to get creative basically um and part of uh, the business plan and you know starting mr g what was that it was just i wanted it to be personal i wanted to get creative with it so yeah. uh whether it's a quirky names or you know um i mean the truffle burger no one was doing a truffle burger at the time no you know no one had heard of you know truffle mayo um uh some of the other burgers like you know using uh you know caramel caramelizing bacon and making it into a jam, you know, so. Pickled onion. Pickled onions, <laughs> yeah, you know, whatever. So um, we wanted it to be, you know, a simple cheeseburger, a simple cheeseburger, mm. but I don't think that's what we want to do. Um, so, yeah, man, like Mr. G, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just given me an opportunity to get creative and I love what I do, you know. Yeah. I'm, I was passionate, I'm still passionate. Like I, I love going to work. I love yeah. being there. It's the same. Everyone always mm. asks me, why are you in finance? Yeah. It's yeah. Like, I, I actually love finance. Yeah. I know it's hard to believe because it's just it's finance, right? <laughs> yeah. But I actually love what it can do for number one for me. Yeah, yeah. But I love teaching people what they can actually do yeah. with finance outside of just That's right. spending money. Well, some people don't really know, like they don't know that they have options. They don't, Not at they don't all. know how to manage their money. Not at all. And I just, but honestly, power is in the education. Mm-hmm. Knowledge is, you know, knowledge is power. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I sing that. If yeah. you don't know, if you don't have the knowledge or you don't have someone teaching you, mm-hmm. you're missing out. On Don't whatever, power, on whatever yeah. it is, like even just before recording this podcast, yeah. I was just having a conversation with my brother-in-law, yeah. and he was just telling me about a documentary they was watching. Yeah, you know, just that conversation of just something that I don't know about yeah. intrigued me, and now I want to go learn more about that's it. That's right. That's right. So, and I find that's the same with finance. I yeah. find the same with the f- yeah. same with food. What's well, your educating people? Yeah, right. You're, you're educating just putting people. it yeah. out there, and you should. Yeah. You, you want to listen. Correct. If you've got something useful to say, yeah. And, you know, I'm willing to listen. Mm-hmm. That's great because yeah. I'm going to learn from you. You're going to yeah. learn from but me. Yeah, I love what you do because it is like if I if we sit down and, and we talk about my you know my uh, finance or how I mean it's like I'm learning from you, right? It's because and that's the thing. Like we don't really get taught much about money in school. Nothing. You know? Nothing. Not really. Zero. You know, and like uh, we're told to save and save, but like that's not really. That's not like a really really. It's yeah, really sad. Yeah, yeah. It's actually yeah. the lack of education, mm-hmm. for financial education mm-hmm. out there at the moment is sad. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hopefully one day people want the right advice and they'll go That's seeking right. the right people, mm-hmm. hint, hint, um, mm-hmm. to, to get that information. So, look, we'll see how that changes yeah. over time. Yeah. Um, happy ending. Yes. Besides the amazing name. Yes. It's catchy, it's, right? It's, it's all, you know, who doesn't want. Happy well, you ending. just, yeah, you may. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. like, where, why did you go outside the truck? It was just at the time, man. It was just at the time we uh, didn't have a plan to expand with Mr. G. Uh, the truck was doing very well. Uh, it was a destination, people were traveling yeah. to it. Um, I felt we were restricted with the, the sort of concept of um, what we could sort of do in the truck. Mm. Um, I just wanted a, like a kitchen, like a proper kitchen, proper brick and mortar yeah. uh, uh, a business. So that's where Happy Ending was born. And it was, it was just different. It's, it's burgers, like we've got burgers on the menu. Yep. It's a whole lot of fried chicken as well. Um, it just, yeah, different name, different sort of uh, feel to it. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, got me got me creative again and just, you yeah. know, so I've just been balancing that and the Mr. G brand. So what's what's the business decision or what was the business concept behind only having the chicken and the chicken burgers available at Happy Ending and mm-hmm. not having the chicken burgers available at Mr. G? 
just because we serve beef burgers or, or at Mr. G mm. and um, happy ending is more, it's more of a fried chicken joint, really. Okay. You know, I mean, there's there's free beef burgers on the menu. Yeah, everything else is it's, just it's just basically fried chicken. chicken. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, but is it is it because you want your sort of customers to when they come to Happy Ending, yep. they're going for the chicken? Yeah, they're having a completely different experience. Different. Okay. they know it's me. They yeah. know it's me. It's you know, uh, we we're not shy from sort they of. They know the quality uh, they're gonna get. Yeah, but it's definitely. Just a, a bit of a different experience uh-huh, in terms uh-huh. of the taste yep. and the flavors and everything. Definitely, else. definitely. Okay. So, you know. It's brick and mortar. You can come. Uh, you can sit down. Um, delivery, takeaway. Um, but yeah, it was just. It was just uh, at the time like fried chicken was sort of like happening. Uh, we were going to a lot of like Korean fried chicken joints in the yeah, area, yum. and it just just made sense, man, to to just do Must. something. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, and people and that's see like it again. It, uh, that brand, people know that it's good fried chicken. Mm. Um, they know it's 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 good burgers. They know it's it's Miss G's behind it. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's done. It's done well, man. That's we've been open for about f- just over three years, I think now. Jeez, yeah. man, time flies. Yeah, man. Honestly, yeah. time flies. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, but I love the name. I think yeah. the name's amazing. It's catchy. <laughs> it's, it's it's a happy it's ending. It's a happy ending. But it literally is like the food's good. Like yeah. you're never it's, disappointed. It's the, the ending. Food's good. Yeah. That's makes you happy. The food just <laughs> and the kicker for me is always the the creaming soda. Yeah, yeah. Because not many you don't you don't see creamy we, soda much anymore. Yeah, like you we, don't really get that. We stock a lot of the the Kirk's range. Um, yeah, the creamy soda, the lemonade, and yeah. So tell me about your team. Yes, because I saw recently on your Facebook. Oh, sorry, no, on your Instagram. Yes, your longest serving manager. Resigned. Very sad day. So, I've I never built a relationship with him, but I'm sure he knows me by face, and mm. I now know him by face. Mm-hmm. What kept him there so long? Number one. Mm-hmm. And you were very emotional, like you actually, yeah. because uh, he was um, he he uh, he was very young. Like he's only he's only like twenty two. He started with us, uh, yeah, just out like we finished school and started working on the weekends with us. And then he he was uh, his uh, position was a team leader basically. Yeah. So um, uh, he was we once we launched the, the the burger truck this year back in the original location that uh, he was on the truck because that's yep. originally where he was sort of working. Um, yeah, it was emotional, man, because it was like he's been there for a long time and, you know, like just a sort of uh, like for me, team is important, you know, mm. and like what we were talking about before, it's it's them understanding the culture and yep. they understanding my like what I'm trying to achieve and what we're trying to do with the brand. Yep. So, um, yeah, it's not, it's not a, it's always sad when someone sort of leaves and, yeah. you know, yeah. Is it, is it hard to find good people to work for you? Yes and no. Okay. Um, when we're hiring, we always like, obviously we've got a very sort of extensive, you know, training and, um, we, we just try to hire the right sort of personalities, I think, you know. Um, guys and girls that just sort of uh, that are hard working but you know you don't have to have experience you don't have to have like we've got systems and 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 and, and yeah. the right training in place to sort of um, you know to sort of educate them on, on what we're doing and you know whether they're you know frying uh, f- fries or they're yeah. building a burger or or they're taking orders yeah so something that a lot of people in business Mm-hmm. say to me is it's hard for me to find someone mm-hmm. that cares about my business as much as I do. In the same I, I don't really agree with that. I don't really agree with that because if you're hiring the right people, like I said, and, and educating them and mm-hmm. training them properly, um, you know, you, you might get some people that just don't get it, you know, like yep. we've, we've, we, you know, um, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't really agree with that. I think it, it really comes back to the owner, comes back mm. to the management, that comes back to just the culture of, of the business. So you a micromanager? No, not really. I used to be. Okay. Because I just like I, at the start, I think I didn't really have a choice. I didn't really have a team like, uh, or you know, we weren't as big, I yeah. guess. So I was there, sort of looking at everything, <laughs> which is right. Yeah. So why did he leave? Who? Why did he leave? Because uh, he's a uni student. Mm, okay. So he's a uni <laughs> student. He's got, yeah. at the start of the year. And like, this is a guy that like, we, we sort of go out together outside of work yeah. and when we catch up. Um, and, you know, he was telling me at the start of the year how he wants to get more experience with uh, the sort of career than 
yeah. what he's doing at uni. So like eventually I knew. And that's the thing, like we hire a lot of young people. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of the staff, are, you know. Um, but that's the reality, right? People are going to come in. People are going to leave. You're not going to be able yeah, to keep yeah, everybody definitely, forever. Definitely, definitely. It's just definitely, sad yeah. to see it, like, you, when you have someone that's been with you for so long. Yeah, yeah. But but look, you know, we, you know, at the time, like, we, you know, working with a very hard worker, very intelligent guy, you know, we, we take on sort of, uh, you know, feedback that he has. Mm-hmm. And he's just sort of been like, you know, it, it, it becomes when you – you know, build sort of this rapport and these re- relationship with with your staff. It just it just becomes family, man. Yeah. You know, and you, you respect them; they respect you. But it's like at the end of the day, it is it's a business. That's right. You know, we all got to put in our share. We got to sort of uh, get the job done. Mm. Um, it's well, hard yeah. too because sometimes mm. there's so much emotion in every decision yeah. you make, whether it's yeah. about people or about product mm. or whatever else you're providing in business. Yep. Right? Yep. How do you how do you keep your emotion away from decisions mm-hmm. without it affecting your business yeah, it's a tough one um because i am an emotional person like yeah, I, i'm the same yeah like i do think of them but i like you just got to keep them separate i guess like you yeah, got to try you got to i know you say mm, it's, mm, it's easy to say you can try yeah, you can try right mm, mm. for me yeah as dumb as this sounds yeah i sometimes got to put on my dickhead hat yeah right and go yeah. if i was the if I was my competitor, yep. what would I be doing mm-hmm. in this circumstance? Yep. Like in this circumstance, yep. right? Yep. Am I dropping? Am I moving on? Mm-hmm. Am I, you know, just being dead, dead honest? Yeah. But then I sort of go, well, fuck, man. Like, I don't want to upset anyone. Mm. I don't want to upset people. Yeah. So, but then I go, okay, well, I got to put my competitor's hat on because mm-hmm. if my customer gets up and let's say walks straight next door, he's getting the exact mm-hmm. same product, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. then I'm going to lose out. Mm-hmm. But if I put my, if I'm then. So if you, if you, if you get your emotions, like if you, if you think with your emotions, that's where, yeah, yeah. that's what you're talking about. Right. So, um, and that's the biggest challenge, I guess, uh, looking at your competition, looking mm. at sort of, um, um, and really like not only your competition, uh, trying to figure out what your customers want. I think that's just like the last maybe year or two. I've been trying to focus on that um, where, you know, how we're talking about how it, it's a it's a personal thing. Yep. And obviously when it's personal, it is like your emotions and all that. And you're making decisions with your emotions. The last two years, I've, I've just sort of like, Took a step back and just really looked at like why, but like why are you still coming to us? Why are you still enjoying our burgers? Do you know what I mean? I can like, tell you. Yeah. I can answer that yeah, for yeah, you. But like that's that's what <laughs> that's what we're trying to like get get down to that sort of that information of, yeah. of, of what makes us because how and how we can imp- improve that. You so know, how, you get, how are you getting that information? Are you asking your customers? Yeah, we're talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I'm always there. I'm all there. I'm yeah. talking to customers. I mean, I'm in the dining area. Um, mm. uh, and. And you know, with with our marketing guy, we're we're always trying to look at ways to try how how do we sort of get that information, um, and we're trying to figure out like ways online, and, yeah. and 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 we're all about feedback, like even if it's negative, and we do get negative. You have to accept. We get the, negative stuff, to. yeah. So we're like, I love reading the reviews, whether it's Google reviews, whether it's you know, um, you know, the the DMs on on our so- social media yeah. pages, um, and taking that information. And sort of, you know, the, yeah. the good stuff that we're doing, but also the negative things, and then um, and trying to just improve. And that, that's why it's just a, it's an ongoing sort of process. You're always learning. We're never going to be perfect, but it's just a, we strive to try to nice to to perfect things, you know. So yeah, I mean, like it it, it can't always be emotional. It can't always yeah. be. Um, you know, you got to. It's hard up. though. It's so, yeah, it's so yeah, hard. Yeah, like it's just. Yeah, yeah. To but, be that's able to it's a, but that's the thing. When when it is emotional, it's very personal. Yeah. And 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 there's rooms to make you like. There's room to make mistakes mm. when it becomes too personal. Yeah. Um, which has been challenging because again, it, it, this is a very personal thing. It's, yeah. it's you know uh, when we started the business. Oh, yeah. yeah. So okay. So what's next? So we now know we know you got the we got the cafe in Ashfield Station. Yes. We have. The Mr. G Burger Truck mm-hmm, mm-hmm. On, in Haberfield, mm-hmm. Parramatta Road. Mm-hmm. We've got Happy Ending, Concord. Mm-hmm. We've also got the Mr. G North Strathfield. North Strathfield. Yeah. We'll call yep. it the residence now because you yep. sort of – Yep, then we're there. We're in North now. Strathfield. Yep. Anything coming up? Anything next? Um, just to keep serving, man. Just to yeah. keep delivering the – I think just doing uh, – well, you know, when, if we're talking about Mr. G, that's because that's where our, our main focus is yep. at the moment. Um, just 
doing the brand justice, okay, just um, getting it out there so more and more people can enjoy it. Yeah. Um, it is a it is a destination. People are traveling. People come all over, from all over Sydney. Um, I had a guy on um, Sunday night from Perth. You know, he's from Perth. I met him and wow. he goes, yeah, he goes, I've been following your socials for, for, for a long time, you know. Wow. I've just been dying to you. He goes, I've got some friends in Sydney. He goes, they, they always go to, to the truck. So um, it's just trying to figure out without sort of like we have an expansion plan, right? Yeah. We don't want to grow too big because we still want to have that sort of you don't control. Want to and, yeah, yeah. So – I don't know whether it's a uh, whether it's uh, going down the path of franchising, whether it's you know. Um, uh, um, I'm putting my hand up. Okay. They want, like, yeah. Just yeah. Like, yeah, I want one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, and 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 next year, uh, from as from from now to next year, uh, we've already looking at two sort of locations. Nice. That uh, we're we're looking to to launch. So the 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 the, the burger truck is the um, obviously it's the original location, it's the original sort of. Um, uh, concept and the novelty of, of going to the burger truck is always exciting um, and we want to have that open as, for as long as we can. Yeah. Um, North Stratford is doing very well but the, the future we, the, the future is brick and mortar. Okay. Um, you know and, and that's uh, you know when you go to North Stratford you get that vibe it's an open kitchen. Yeah. Um, I mean my uh, me and Eddie that helps me with marketing. Mm -hmm. That's what we've realized with like both locations don't have a door. It's just yeah, this welcoming true, actually, sort yeah. of this what and you know this welcoming sort of energy, and that's what we want to re replicate. So when I say brick and mortar, we don't want to sort of uh, we don't want to just be a, 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 a yeah exactly you want to be just exactly. the restaurant. yeah 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 you want to be yeah, in the restaurant yeah, yeah, yeah which yeah. makes sense. And that's all it is, man. It's all about just having that open kitchen, that open space, and um, and just having that. You know, we're we're, we're welcoming. There's, there's mm. all sorts of people that come to to us. We don't. So, who, what's not, your demographic? What would you say is your demographic for your like age customer? or age? Where are they from? I think um, uh, definitely like a lot of young people. Yep. Uh, a lot of like older people, I guess. Like. Just everyone, really. Yeah. Like we don't, we're not sort of, we don't have this sort of like niche sort of market that we, yeah, yeah. Uh, that we, you know, like everyone just loves it. Yeah, I know, but it's like yeah. you've got a cult following though, right? It's not yeah. easy to have a cult following. Like mm -hmm, there's not many mm -hmm, places that, mm -hmm, that have mm -hmm. a certain, I don't know, age bracket or whatever you want to call it, go to this place religiously. Mm -hmm. You've done, you've cracked that. Yeah. We have like, we have, People around like I think we're sort of the same age. I'm 33. Yeah. Okay. 33. So what's your how old are you? Yeah, 33. Oh, I thought yeah, you were like I thought you were no, like no. I'm 33. I'm no. like, is he older? <laughs> <laughs> no. So like um, sort of our age yep. group a bit older. Um, we've got like the guys in their mid 20s, and then we've got this sort of like new like I call them like the the TikTok generation, <laughs> you know, like you know. So because um, we don't have a TikTok account, but like yep. we get a lot of sort of, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it's called. I, can't, I just can't keep up. It's yeah. like just, it's too much. Like but it's you have to sort of, you have to, you have to sort of um, understand, you know, what, what the, because, so because that's what, that's how Instagram was for us once upon a time. Cause when we, when we, we had a, we had an, we had a Instagram account before we were even open. I was posting stuff um, before we were even open. Really? And that was important. Yeah. So what were you posting? Are we posted, were you actually like making no, burgers at home? Working in a kitchen and just doing stuff, stuff at home, yeah. We used to have friends over and like I'd just take photos. We had quite a bit wow. of a, like a like a decent following. I never thought but of that. But it was always like this sort of people following going, okay, this is a, a, a business that's going to open. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. And then um, – yeah, when we were open, a lot of people that were following the Instagram, they were coming, oh, we've been following your your, your page and, and, and blah, blah. So, um, so that how back you... then, that's, that's, that's uh, back then with the Instagram account yeah. or Instagram as a platform, um, a lot of people didn't understand that, which was important. No. So um, we're seeing that with TikTok. As well. Whoa. So, so is that where your client, oh, clients, keep calling mm, clients because mm, of me, mm, is that where your majority of your customers are finding you on social media? I think so. It's just, uh, I think it's, um, it's just a platform to sort of uh, 
share information. Like it, it's just a sort of, yeah. it's a way to communicate with people. And, you know, we're talking about reviews and, yeah. and sort of feedback, whether it's, it's that, it's – We're in the day and age, you just have to be online. Yeah. You have, you have to have be to. online. You have, you have to have a presence. Because there's, yeah, there's that it's reality of, of, yeah, uh, our reality online. G, yeah, yeah. what's been yeah. your favourite thing mm-hmm. about being self-employed? Just being able to create, man, like just being able to to just build something and just seeing seeing it go from here yep. to like it's live, so it's happening. Just bringing it to It's breathing creation. And, and, and now I'm sitting here with wow. you. Wow. And you enjoy it, right? And you, I love it. Okay. I've like a, so just uh, uh, I've never hidden that. Yeah. I think I've got like four or five yeah. posts on my social yeah. media just dedicated yeah. to the Stoner's Revenge. Yeah. So And don't get mate, me wrong, I, I'm a I bit like it. I'm like I'm a businessman. I'm I'm all about yeah. numbers and 100%. I'm all about, you know, but it's gotta but, make sense. Yeah. Literally. Dude, it's it's like that what I just said is yeah. much more rewarding. Much just seeing people enjoying it. And what's been the least your least favorite thing about being self employed? Just not having or well, like in my industry maybe not having like weekends yeah uh just you know not sometimes not having enough time with family yeah because we me and my Stuff. wife always because my wife's involved as yeah. well with the with the business and you know we always constantly need to remind each other like oh shit you know like we need our time. We need to try to be a normal mm. family, <laughs> whatever that is. I don't, I don't know what that is. What's a normal family these days? I don't days? know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But it's right. It's good though because yeah. it's paying off. Number one, like yeah. your success speaks for itself, which is amazing. So I want to congratulate you on that. Yeah. Last thing before we mm-hmm. we finish off, and yep. I I asked this to our last guest. I'm going to yep. ask it to you. Yes. If you were to give one tip or one piece of advice to anyone that's about to go on their own mm-hmm. and open up any business, what mm-hmm. would it be? It's not as easy as it looks. Yep. Definitely not. Um, there's not a lot of money in it. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> it's, 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 you know? Yep. Um, there's not a lot of money. Like where, when I say there's not a lot of money in it, there's not a lot of money that you think that there is in it. Yep. Okay? Because I talk to a lot of people, man. Mm. Because with with the success that the business has, has brought, obviously I, I, I meet a lot of people and I, I meet people that want to start their own business. Yeah. So I'm in a position where I'm sort of giving advice to people and yeah. I'm talking to people, I'm hearing um, their ideas and, and blah, blah. And um, yeah, man, like it's just not as easy as you think it is. Yeah. Um, it's, you just have to be a certain person because it, you really need to, you just really need to be hungry. Yep. You really need to just just live it. Really, like I live my like my this is, like my business is my business. I don't have any other hobbies. Like I have, I don't it's have any. Like, yeah, like I love food. Um, I love the the menu that we've created. Um, our branding, our story, and we've been through a lot. The business has been through a lot. Yeah. Like, so if I can interpret that, mm-hmm. it's basically put your heart and soul into it. Yeah, man. Don't think about and anything else. It's twenty four seven. Go in wholeheartedly. It's. You're in the trench, man, and it's just you can't Perfect. get out. You got to keep going. Boom, boom, boom. Perfect. That's awesome. G, yeah. thank you very much. Thank you so Congratulations much. Congratulations on everything you've done with Mr. G. Mm-hmm. Thank Happy you. Happy ending. Thank you. Um, I'm still going to be your, one of your biggest fans. I'll see you. And I hope on this weekend. Yeah, you definitely <laughs> see me this weekend, mate. Thanks again for coming. Thank Love you, brother. Man. Cheers. Thank you.